glad you could join us today for what I believe is the eighth episode of the Salem Painter. Today we've got a really fun painting we're going to do. Right now what I'm doing is putting a thin coat of liquid white on the canvas. I explain every few episodes so I think I'll take a little bit of time to do that now. Liquid white is a, a thin oil paint that we often use to help the paint move better and help the paint blend better on the canvas. It's, it's because of that that we can, we, we can blend colors up here and it's, it makes this technique work. On our YouTube channel, I posted a, a link, well actually on our, our, on our Facebook, I posted a link to a video of Bill Alexander talking about inventing this, this material. He, he called it his uh, magic white. The Bob Ross version is liquid white. A lot of you might not know this, but Bob Ross actually learned this technique from Bill Alexander. I loved watching both of the shows growing up. I was always a big fan of Bob Ross because it came on so often. But I also like to watch Bill Alexander when it came on. You can learn so much from both of them. And I'm hoping that you're learning from me watching this. And uh, I'm certainly learning a lot. So hopefully we can learn together as, as we continue doing this series. I always sign the, the back of the paintings because I don't like putting my signature on top of the landscape I just painted. And let me look here. This is number 23. This is the 23rd painting I've done. All right, we, we got liquid white there. So I'm going to go ahead and if you'll go down to my palette here, I've got some green that I've already mixed up because I want a really light color. To, today what we're going to be doing is a landscape from from an anime show I like to watch called Dragon Ball Z. This is the planet Namek that we're going to paint. And the other day I was talking to my drummer and he was telling me, "Hey man, I've been watching your show." And and I, t I told him, you know, one of the hardest things is is not painting, but deciding what I'm going to paint next. Cuz it, it's always hard to come up with new ideas. And he said, "Well, why don't you try doing the planet Namek? I said, well, the planet Namek, like from Dragon Ball Z? He said, well, yeah. And I said, you know, that that actually sounds like a good idea. And so he sent me a picture, and and I studied it and looked at it. And, you know, I could do a, a landscape just like that, but I want to give it more of a nature feel like all of our other paintings. So we're going to do it in sort of a, a realism style, I guess. Maybe get a little bit more green here. We'll mix in with that. I used to watch the show all the time when I was a teenager. It came on on Toonami on Cartoon Network and I'd watch it every day when I got home from school. I, I love watching animes because I, th I think what I like most about animes is the beautiful art in the background. And I'm going to get a little bit of uh, a cad yellow on the brush and put a little bit of it down here because coming towards the horizon it got a little bit yellow and I'm just gonna blend that out and see how that looks After I put the yellow in, it looks like maybe we need a little bit more green coming down. So just go and brush some more in. A little bit brighter in this area. Well, a little bit darker actually. And 
And today here in the studio, we've got some people helping us out with some of the episodes. Uh, you can see their name in the credits. I definitely want to thank them for coming out and helping us. It really makes this a lot easier. And I'm hoping maybe in some future episodes we can get some cameramen in here. But this, this works pretty well for now, so I think we'll stick with this for a while. And down near the horizon, there's a little bit of white. So I'm just going to scrub in some white that kind of mixed in with the other colors. Tap it to kind of make it look like a fog. Just come across it. And then we'll just blend out our sky. Because the colors here are similar, we're just going to use the same brush to do that with. Now we're going to come across the bottom and just start from the outside going in. Put some green down here and, and what's going to be water. because water always reflects the sky. That's what gives it most of its colors. Sometimes it's a little bit darker. Maybe we'll mix a little blue in with it. And you want to start from the outside edge because if you start in here, like if I run right here and go across, you're going to leave a little line. So if you start from the outside edge, just go out it. You can avoid that. And right here in the middle, I'm going to leave some areas where there's a little white streak going down. And hopefully this will look like a sheen of light coming down whenever we're done. And uh, now that we got that, I'm just going to go across lightly, blend it. So it picks up some of that color too, but you'll still be able to see that in there. All right, and I'm going to rinse out our brush. Actually, I have a little bit more blending to do first, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done. You know, sometimes when you're up close, it's hard to see what you got going on. So you'll want to back up a little bit, and from back here, it's very easy to tell if everything is blended correctly. Of course, you all have the best view. Some of these paintings I painted, I, I think they're going to be a huge disaster until I back up and look at them. And usually they're coming along pretty nice. All right, I'm going to wash out this brush. A little paint thinner. I rub it across the wire rack I have in the bottom of my paint can. And I just beat off the excess paint thinner into my beater bar I've got in this waste basket. I'll go back over it with a paper towel to make sure all the paint's off. Alright, next I remember from the picture that you sent me that there were several clips and things like that and these little projections that just went straight up in the air and had a flat top on them. So first, I'm going to start off making some of those and just make a basic shape and come down with my palette knife. I remember there were some little areas like this and it kind of went out. Right now, I'm just, I'm just making a little edge. We'll come back and clean this up with the brush, but it, it's easier to scrape in the paint with a palette knife, I think. Most of this is going to be cut covered up by our highlight color. And this painting is, is definitely new to me, it's, but most things are because, like I said, this is the 23rd painting I've ever done. I haven't been painting long. But uh, this one is definitely very interesting. 
and something that I hadn't thought about about trying yet. So I'd like to thank Jacob for the idea. And uh, assuming uh, this painting goes well and I get it home without destroying it, I'm going to send this one to him. All right, while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and do another little projection we got like that out here. Kind of the same way we do the mountains. I'm just going to scrub those in. We're not too worried about the color underneath it. This is just a dark color that we can put highlights on. Scrape some of that excess paint off because uh, at the bottom of this I want to put some mist. And I believe there was one more little projection like that, maybe about right here in the background a little. Further back. And in the picture, I believe the light was coming from the left side. So I'm going to go back and try to make these a little bit darker on the right. A lot of times it's, it's easier to put your highlights on on the right side if you're right-handed. But light doesn't always come from that direction, so it's, it's good to get some practice doing this both ways. All right, I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of that same brown color, not much, just a little, and we're going to take some white, a little bit more white, and some raw sienna, which is a color I don't often use, but it looked like it would fit in perfect with this. We're going to mix it so it's kind of marbled. And we're going to come from the top of these on the left side and just kind of drag down, letting the paint break up as we go. And hopefully, if we do this right, it's, it's going to look like light shining along these little cliffs. Anytime you want to make a highlight color, you want it to be something that's really bright, like a yellow or a white. All right. Now in this picture, there was a little fog and a few clouds. While we're still working on what's pretty far back in the background, I'm going to go ahead and, and get some fog. First, we'll tap along the base. Tap along the base of this. It's going to make it look very foggy. Picked up a little bit of that color from the cliff. That's okay. picture I was looking at, the mist went behind this one, so there wasn't as much on it, maybe, maybe a tiny bit, and it kind of went up into the sky. And all we're doing is just creating mist. take my fan brush I'm gonna get some white we're gonna scrub in some of those clouds that I saw it's just little flat bottoms like this and kind of
kind of went up like that. Maybe another one up there. Just kind of spread it across. tripping over my trash can. Alright, and after we're done with these, clouds usually aren't very well defined, so we're going to take our clean brush, just kind of lightly fluff them up just a little bit, just a little, just a couple of hairs. And after we've done that, uh, lightly come across, just like we do when we're doing water reflections. And that value is going to remain in the canvas, even if you end up scraping some of the paint off. And you know, you want to be careful because if you go across these too much, they're going to blend into your background. So just be careful not to do that. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do in this painting is at the base of these, I remember there was some little land areas. We're going to scrub some ground into there. And this is not very important. It's going to end up being covered up. But uh, it's a great way to help us lay out our painting. Remember there's some, some ground here. A little bit down here. Things get darker as we come forward, and that also includes what's underneath. All right, and that's enough ground for now. I think I think we basically we basically have what we need. You know, we we have an idea of where the ground's going to be so we can build our painting around this. Maybe that came out a little bit more. All right. And when I'm doing something like this, sometimes I just lay the brush to the side without washing it because I try to keep one brush going for my dark colors and one brush going for my lighter colors to keep from having to wash them so much. It doesn't always work, but it's very helpful when it does. All right, along each of these land areas, we come drag down. It, the, the area near the lakes, they all look like cliffs, sort of. So I want to to drag that down, so so it looks like a little little cliff. Very high river banks, and to do this, I'm just mixing together a little raw sienna and Van Dyke brown. And most of this is pretty far back in the background, so don't worry about a lot of detail. Just let it break up like the mountain so it looks like there's some highlights and things going on. And as we get closer, we want that to be more pronounced and a little bit darker. Gonna mix in some more brown. Might have to get out some more brown here. I've been using a lot for this painting. Normally I just use brown to to darken up colors and maybe make the trunks of trees. Now 
this painting is a lot of fun for me already. It's much different from the things we normally do. That makes me happy. All right, all right, so we got those done. Come back a little bit later, maybe put some more highlights on them. This one doesn't look very good to me, so I'm gonna go back and redo it. Okay, now we're gonna take some more green, a little bit of white, almost like the color of the sky, but a little bit darker. We're gonna mix a little blue in with it. And the tops of these little cliffs had tufts of grass on them. I guess that's what you'd call that. Mesa cliff? I don't know. What, what, what are these? Somebody should email me and tell me what these are called. These little projections. They had grass on the top. So grassy areas and these these grassy areas are throughout the painting in different places there are places where the ground showed through but a bit lighter back here because the fog and when things are further away they look lighter I can help you add some depth to your painting to remember that I'm going to go ahead and just uh, paint a lot of grass on here. I'm going to cover all the areas that are grassy areas with paint now. And because of what I got here, I'm going to need to go ahead and make some more of this, this little bank here. And there were a lot of places on this painting where the dirt did show through, so I want to make sure not to cover that all up. You know, it seems to me that maybe there was another little projection going down through here so go ahead and do that you know if you miss something that's okay you can go ahead and put it back in you can cover up things you've already done all it takes is just swiping your palette knife across it A big mess here with the knife. And after I get done with it, I'm going to do just like I did on the other si sides. Just uh, come back and put some dark color going to the side here. So it looks darker on this side. Come get some highlight color. Come back down it also on the left side. Now 
always like the sound that the palette knife makes when it hits a canvas. The, this is uh, the Bob Ross brand pa pa palette knife that I have, but uh, the other one, is it works just as well. And I also like the sound it makes. I, I don't know if you can hear this, but it kind of sounds like a sword coming out of a sheath. I love that. Sometimes when I'm at home, it takes me a while to start painting because I'm too busy playing with the palette knives. A little bit more brown. We want to make sure this edge is very defined. If you have to go lay it in like cake frosting, that's fine. Okay, now I'm going to go back into my green. I'm going to paint the top of this with the grassy area like we have on the other ones. I feel like maybe this, this one needs a little bit more white. It doesn't seem to be highlighted enough, so drag that down. There we go. Maybe blend it here a little bit more. Sometimes I I step back and take a look at it, and I'm not what, happy with what I've got, so just go back over it again. Just make that appear very mixed. Actually, I'm going to scrape off some of that white. I put a little bit too much. Just come back and go over the side again. All right. That's better. And back to my fan brush. Continue putting in some of these grassy areas. And I'm going to leave a spot open right here because I have something special I want to put in here. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. You know, this was uh, the first anime I ever really sat down and watched. And I really enjoyed it. I'd, I'd seen others before, but just movies I would rented from a video store we had near our house and they never had the whole series and only a few of them were movies so most of the time I'm just watching these and I have no idea what's going on but this was the first series that I actually got the chance to watch most of and uh, I enjoyed it and I've been watching it ever since I'm a big anime fan We actually had the Funimation work. I've been watching a lot of One Piece, and my girlfriend, she loves to watch Fairy Tale. So she, she watches the channel almost more than I do. But, you know, some of my favorites uh, have been animes like Gundam Wing and. Uh, and One Piece is actually really good. I've I've enjoyed that. It's a little bit silly, but sometimes it's just what I want. And I like some of the more serious ones, like Ghost in the Shell. I love the art style on that. I'd say one of my favorite animes I've ever watched was only six episodes long. And it's not even in English. It's always subtitled. They haven't dubbed it yet. It's a, it's an anime called The Time of Eve. 
and uh, it's interesting to me because not only is it you know it's not like most animes it it combines a lot of classic sci-fi themes with the anime for, for example that that show is based on Isaac Asimov's Laws of Robotics and uh, I always loved Isaac Asimov stuff now what I'm doing here I've got a little liquid white and I spread it out on my palette and now I'm just taking some up to make water lines where the water hits. Actually, uh, before I do that, I need to come back in and put some reflections. So we're just gonna just gonna pull these down. And there's a couple other things I want to do before I do my waterline. I'm just getting ahead of myself. All right, next, I'm going to paint some trees. I'm going to use that same color brown, but I'm just going to come in and make a little line. The trees on this planet and, and the show were just straight lines the big green ball of vegetation at the top. And when I'm doing this, I want it to be lighter on the left side of the trunk because that's where the light's coming from. And I'm just going to take my one inch brush and go into some green. just sap green and make that little ball of vegetation that's up there. That was always a perfect little circle. Maybe I want this trunk to be a little darker, so I'm going to take more of my dark brown. I'm going to come down it again with that. I'm going to come back and make this part a little bit bigger. I remember in the picture this tree flecked into the painting, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that down there. I'm not going to do it just like I did because it wasn't exactly mirrored, but go back and put some of that same color into the water. You know, you can make some beautiful reflections if, if you have the time at home. You can just turn the canvas upside down and paint exactly what's under it. That's fun to do. But we don't really have time for that today, so we're just going to show you how to do this, and then you can go back and do it. If I remember correctly, there was another tree right here. Just tapping in that color. Let's 
is a great way to make regular trees too, especially if they're very close in the foreground. You can tap in the color like this, dark underneath, tap in limbs, and then go back and get some lighter color and highlight it. Maybe you'll come across it kind of kind of sweep up as you do it because this tree is round and you want it to kind of have that appearance when when you're done with it and once again we're going to go back down put some of this into the water we're not too worried about it and uh, get our green holding down my easel here because I've kind of got a cheap easel. Need to buy a new one. Or maybe get some sandbags to put on this one. Yeah, and I'm also going to take some of that Van Dyke Brown and put it up in the tree. And I'm going to come back over it with a little bit lighter green to make some highlights. I'll do the same for the one in the background. And after that, I think I'm going to get a clean brush, go back into the lighter green we have prepared over here, maybe mix a little more white in with it. And we're going to come back and just, just put some highlights up on the left side of these. We've got our trees finished, basically. I might come back and work on them a little bit more in a few minutes. Actually, I wanna, I wanna put one more in, just way in the background here, because these are fun. Maybe a little bit more dark color. Go ahead and put green around the top of that. And this one's back in the background, so it doesn't have to be as dark. It's fun to have in there. And part of it's going to be in this fog we've mentioned before, so tap that out. And we're picking up some of that color from the trunk. It's going to help add to this mist. And I don't think that one's close enough to be reflecting in the water. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to wash off this brush. I'm going to do the reflections. When you're doing reflections in the water, it's very important that you make sure your brush is completely dry or it will make quite a big mess. So you just, just come down lightly over this that you've just done, just a few hairs. Very lightly. And you're going to come across. Here's the brush, 
As you can see, I'm getting too much paint in here, so I'm just going to blend it into the water. Blend it on, make it go away. That's the hardest part about making reflections. It's just when you're coming across, make sure you, you don't go too hard because you don't want to destroy this that you just worked so hard to create. that we got some of these reflections done we can go back and put the water line in that I was trying to put in a long time ago getting ahead of myself but yeah just liquid white on the knife get a little cut of it and go across just almost like you're trying to cut into the canvas you know you, you don't have to worry about cutting the canvas with this this knife because this canvas is very strong I used to use canvas to make tents with. I think most of them that they make now are plastic, but for many years, canvas was, was what they used to make all tents. Past tents. You know, I was driving home from work the other day in my car, and, uh, I was thinking about the painting show and you know something that's very important that I always want to tell people is you don't have to be a master to paint you know me I'm definitely not a master I just enjoy doing it and I like to share it with you there are some amazing painters that do some things that I don't think I'll ever be able to do but uh, you know, it's inspiring to look at You know, they have the old saying that goes, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. I guess that's kind of true. I like to learn to do a lot of things pretty good instead of mastering one thing. You know, I was uh, also driving along, and then I thought about how a, a, a head nun at a convent would be a master of nuns. So she must be a jack of all trades. And I thought that was stupid. So instead of uh, being a comedian, I paint. Actually, I think I'd be a pretty good comedian, but everything I think is funny, they won't let me talk about on television. So I think I'll stick to painting for now. Now this painting's looking pretty much how I want it to. There's a few places where I've smeared it and I'll go back and clean those up. I don't want to spend too much time on it because we, we have a limited amount of time. Oop, that was a mess. And when you're doing this, it's, it's important that you have a clean brush. If you don't, you'll do like I just did. And, and, and rub brown into your, your water. But I can just blend it out and it'll just disappear if I work it enough. Looks like I got a little dried piece of paint that might have came out of my liquid white. So I'm just gonna kind of try to blend it out, make it part of the painting. Sometimes you can come along with your palette knife and lift it right off. Just blend out that spot. You'll never know it was there. All right. Now I mentioned earlier that here in this little section I've left open, 
I was planning something special. Since this is a Dragon Ball Z painting, I want to put a Dragon Ball in the painting. It's right here in the grass. I think that'll be fun. Just kind of take my fan brush and spin it around. Actually, that's not working for me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to finger paint this just like I did the moon uh, two episodes ago and the sun in my seascape painting. Speaking of seascapes, I want to try that again sometime soon because I wasn't very happy with the last one. I did learn a lot from it, but uh, I felt like it could be a lot better. And what I was doing there is just blending off some paint that got outside the circle from where I was trying to do the fan brush thing. And the next thing I'm going to do, take some red paint. I don't know how many of you have watched the show, but the Dragon Balls always have stars on them. There are seven of them, and they had to gather them up so they could go summon a dragon who was kind of like a genie and, and would grant wishes. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that paint and make a little star there in the middle of it. And I'm just using a script liner brush here. And the reason the paint's not sticking very well is because it's not thinned out enough. Could have had a little bit of paint thinner with it. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, that's a little bit brighter. To clean things like script brushes and fan brushes, you just scrape them back and forth really fast on the rack inside. You don't actually have to 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 beat the those tiny brushes against the trash can because it's just not going to work. Get a little more yellow paint going here. All right, now that I've got that in there, I'm going to go back the same green color, and I'm just going to put some little grassy areas around it. And I'm going to need a little bit more green, and so I'm going to go down here into my paint box. And some of our previous episodes, I was going to add more paint and didn't have my paint near me, so we had to call our producer in here to come bring it to me. So this this time I decided to go ahead and keep it under here. I've got a, a nice box that my girlfriend's mother bought me for, for Christmas. And, uh... I keep all my paints in here and all my brushes. And she also got me some Bob Ross Joy painting books. I enjoyed looking at those. But what's interesting is she, she bought them online. And the one I got was actually signed by Bob Ross inside the cover. He signed it in 1992. And uh, it was wrote out to some guy named Jeff. And... Uh, he said, happy painting, God bless. You know, had Bob Ross's signature on there. There we go. And so that was pretty awesome. But uh, I didn't understand why they went around that whole day calling me Jeff. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? And that was why. I did not expect that at all.
Maybe I'll have to bring it here to the show one day and show it to you. And hopefully it'll end up looking like it's just sitting there in the grass when we're done with it. Just paint some over it. We've got these trees. We want to paint a little grass going over the, the feet of them. You don't want anything looking like it's just floating on top of your, your painting. All right, I think we're going to step back and take a look at what we've got. That looks pretty good. I, th I think I'm pretty happy with this. So I hope that you learned a lot from this today, and uh, I hope that Jacob likes this painting because it's for him. And, you know, I hope this ins inspires you to try something out. Maybe, we, maybe you like uh, cartoons or something. You want to paint something that, that looks like your favorite cartoon. That's that's a great way to learn. I hope that that you learned a a lot by uh, you, you know the things I tell you. Or if not, maybe maybe you just enjoy watching the show and and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, our Facebook is facebook.com/slash the Salem Painter, and you can find us on YouTube by searching for the Salem Painter. And every time we film a new episode, as soon as we get it completed, we upload it. So. Every every time a new episode is available, you'll be able to see it there first. And our show is going to start airing four times a week on CCTV starting on October 18th, I believe. I'll bring the times for the next episode and, and let you know for sure when it will be coming on. But uh, we look forward to doing a lot of these shows with you, and um, and we hope that you enjoy watching them if you do be sure to contact the station let us know contact us online and uh, you know until next time happy painting and thanks for watching